And mics are hot. Hey, folks. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to So Chatty. I'm your host, So Matty Games, aka Matty, and we're here on the Thread Raiders Twitch channel. Yeah, baby. Um, the oh, yeah. the place where I got my start and uh, learned how to stream. Um, so I am happy to always return here for these charity events and hang out with my friends and my family at the Thread Raiders. Hey, folks. Good to see you. Um, so, uh, we're in for the long haul. Uh, we'll probably take a break here in a couple hours. And um, anybody who's uh, really feeling the exhaustion train um, will depart. And uh, we'll pick back up and hang out some more. I have no idea what we're going to do, but we will take your questions. Uh, so, um, I just don't know how I'm going to keep track of all that, but we'll <laughs> figure it out, right? Um, I know what I can do. Let me open up a Word doc, right? And I can just copy and paste when I see them in chat. And... Maddie, do you want me to do that? Uh, I mean, if you're, if you're feeling it, yeah, you could do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, because I usually have the... <laughs> I usually have the thing that gets takes the questions and stuff but i got it i yeah i'm just uh yeah we're but we're here uh we're <laughs> um i did not get a lot of sleep last night and then uh after the retroverse game earlier which was amazing um i had so much fun uh <laughs> i was feeling it so I finally, once I got all the graphics done, I was like, okay, I'm going to lay down, take a quick nap. And I did about an hour and a half, you know, that's that weird, like, hmm, is it Not really a nap at an hour and a half? <laughs> like, does it really do anything? That's how it felt. Yeah. I'm still, I don't know. My brain's not working. Yeah. Um, but look at all of you beautiful people. Uh, so glad you could hang out with us tonight. So, without further ado, why don't I have my guests introduce themselves, and then we can get to, um, well, some chat. Uh, um, yeah, I know, I know. Really, it's not. I'm so tired. Um, but I have some Pepsi, and, um, and I have cake. Of course, I have cake. Yeah. So, if you know me, I'm a big cake person. So, uh, let's go ahead. We'll cake. start from the, I think it's left to right, right? That's the direction. Yeah, okay. I don't, I, I really, I am really tired. Um, so, uh, just go ahead and um, do a quick intro to the folks watching. And we'll go ahead and start with Rick and work our way over. Uh, so, Rick, go ahead and introduce yourself to the folks. Hi there, I am Ricky Rick, and I um, got my Discord start on Thread Raiders. So, I am happy to be part of that little family. Um, I am at Behom Moss, Behom underscore Moss, um, on Twitter, and I post silly D&D things. So. Did I get everything right? I think so. Okay, cool. That is me. <laughs> Yay! Yay! And uh, this is uh, this is Rick's first time on the Chatty, so I'm so glad you could be here with us. I am too. Yay! Um, and we just got to do one of the uh, Get to Know a Thread Raider interviews just, um, just a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to play D&D last night, which was a lot of fun. Uh, so thank you for running such a great game. We had Absolutely. A, we had a blast. Um, and, uh, uh, night, Kevin, love you, buddy. Uh, and, uh, so, yep. Thank you for being here. Uh, nerdy Teddy. Uh, hi. Yeah. I'm nerdy Teddy. Um, mostly over on welcome to the party. Um, I occasionally jumped over to, to thread raiders and discord, and the, the one and only time I've been on the stream was with Maddie for about a year ago, roughly, for Vampire. So, yeah. It's good to be back. Um, 
yeah, I've run a few games. Uh, mostly I'm welcome to the party, like you said. And now, uh, Nerds with Dice, I'll be starting up an, a new game in October. And you can check out information on that on my Twitter, at Nerdy Daddy. Wow, okay, that sounds awesome. Oh, I'm excited, I'm excited. Anything that you do is... It's always been awesome. So, so glad you could be here to hang out with us. Yeah. Um, uh, Ari. Hello, I am the lady underscore. Wait, I did it again. The the underscore lady underscore Ori. I do it every time. Every time on my name, I can't even <laughs> I don't know how to write my. That's own a name. lot of underscore. Um, you know, it is. It's too many. Someone stole <laughs> yeah, my name, tough. and I need to highlighter this. But anyway, um, uh, you can find me on my Twitch. Same name. And I do stream on Friday and welcome to the party for my game. Um, uh, Sleepy Angels. Yes, Jackie, I know I did it to myself. Um, but yeah, I do art and stuff for Twitch channels and third party D&D publishers and stuff like that. But right now I don't have anything in the works, so I'm taking a small break. Yeah. Some creative juice is back. Good for you. I needed a break. <laughs> uh, breaks are good. Um, I should, I should, I should tr try to do that sometime. Um, I don't know. Eh. <laughs> Meh. Um, but all right. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, <coughs> you are, you're amazing. I love you. Um, Say uh, that, but... <laughs> and finally, Chris. Hey everybody! Um, I'm. You can find me over at on Twitter at at Kristen, and then or over at So Chatty. Um, he lets me play on his channel every so often. Otherwise, uh, come find me around. I, I'd like to. I do a lot of signal boosting whenever I see something fun. So, um, and you do, and uh, you're a fantastic <laughs> human being with a great family. I love you to pieces, man. Oh, same to you. Um, so um so we've uh <coughs> so usually start these off with uh you know anybody who's not been on the show before will usually do this thing where i ask them this question and so everybody's answered the question including um in the get to know a thread raider video um interview i did with rick has answered this question but since you know we're we're on a different channel we're with a different audience uh why don't we go through these because i think this is a great way to kick off a conversation about tabletop role-playing games um is to find out and to hear about its origins for you um so we'll go around the room we'll t and we'll we'll get this going and um and of course i'll uh boy I really am tired. Um, yeah. It's going to be a long night. Uh, I'm going to reiterate, uh, folks, um, we definitely encourage uh, everyone in chat to join the conversation and ask your questions. If you have any questions for the panel or, uh, you know, you can even ask individual questions if you like, but um, uh, please join the conversation and bring your questions. Uh, you can throw those in the chat and we'll uh, catch those up and we'll get to those after we do our um talk about our introductions here to tabletop role playing games and so why don't we uh go ahead and we'll start with Rick um so uh I asked this was part of the get to know thread raider uh interview um but it's something that I ask everyone who comes on the show for the first time it's the first question I ask and I think one because it's just interesting uh I've interviewed, talked to, had, uh, <laughs> I've sat down with 115 different people um, through the So Chatty and the GM Chats and the, the fundraiser. Um, and every answer to this question is always unique and it's always interesting and I love them to death. So, um, Rick, can you tell us your introduction to tabletop role-playing games? Yes, I can. Oh, you want... Sorry. Yes, was, please. Uh, <laughs> um, my introduction was um, 
from my older brother, Maester Rory, and he decided to run a campaign for my mom, myself, um, my niece, and yeah, I think that was it. Maybe one of our friends. Anyway, um, it was really, really fun, and it was a fourth edition, so that's where I got my start, and I have been totally hooked since then. I have been in six campaigns at once, um, and that was pretty darn fun and kind of hard to manage, but it was it was good times. Now I'm just in two, two right now. So yeah. Awesome. Um, so that that start was in four E. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I totally skipped over that. I. Uh... Me too. I don't know. I um. Okay. I like it a lot better than five. You do. Okay. I do. That's interesting. I love to hear this because I hear a lot more of the opposite, right? Um, right. There's a lot of folks who really, um, generally, when people talk about four E, I hear a lot of negativity. Uh, generally, of course, there have been plenty of folks who've been on the show who have raved about four E. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know too much about it. My only real experience with it is uh, the uh, the D and D board games that they made. Uh, were started in 4e and so a number of the mechanics involved like derived from there but that's about it that's about it you know um i so i don't know much about it i'm always but i'm always interested to hear about the uh the differences and stuff like that but what is it about 4e that you like better um i'm not entirely sure i like the battle mats <laughs> okay being able to physically i mean i love theater of the mind but i like being able to have my physical mini and um play around with her right and um i just i like the different skills that they had that they got rid of for fifth like streetwise i loved streetwise for some reason mm -hmm. um and it's just i i've said this before um, on the Thread Raiders podcast, but you never forget your first. So, right, <laughs> sure, um, that's very true. <laughs> but to counter that, my first was AD and D first edition, and I mean, I'll never forget it. But I don't love it. I, uh, I, I have no desire to go back to that. Um, no, no, not ever. But, um, I get the fond memories, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's very true about the first. Um, so, okay, so there are the skills that, uh, the different skills that maybe they got rid of. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can still have your, uh, your battle maps and stuff like that in 5e, right? It's true. Um, one of the games that I'm in is um, online with a bunch of people from different countries. Yeah. So um, we use Roll Twenty, and so we're allowed allowed to, we're able to um, mess around with our people there. Pardon me. And um, but the other one that I'm in right now is all theater with the mind. And I just, okay. it was a lot easier for me to calculate damage and attack um, bonuses. Okay. Because they were like written right there. This is your attack bonus. You don't have to remember, oh, wait, what was my spell bonus? Whatever. Uh -huh. So um, I'm just not very good at remembering that type of stuff. Yeah, I get that. So. <laughs> I get that. I, uh, yeah. I. Boy, wow, the brain just went shut down. You can do it. <laughs> um, 
because I, you know, like I personally have always been a theater of the mind person. That's just what I'm used to. And, mm-hmm. um, but can you actually play fourth edition without the, uh, tabletop stuff, the, uh, the maps and the you, figure ears and stuff? You can, but with things like flanking and, um, specific movement yeah. squares, it's a little more difficult. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Interesting. Okay. Um, oh, that's a really good question. I like that. Got it is a good question. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to put them into the Zoom chat since it's easier for everyone to access than a... Oh, yeah, there you go. Thank you. That's perfect. Good call. There we go. Someone's... That way I don't have to have the blinding white light of my Google screen when everything oh, else is in night mode. <laughs> someone's cooking with gas, and that means I can well, close that. Matt so. Jameson. Um, <laughs> Touche. Uh, well, that's all. <laughs> thank, uh, thank you, Rick. Um, honestly, that's that's really super interesting. I, um, I don't know if... I think I would have probably hated 4th edition, to be honest. <laughs> Um, if it, a lot of people did because I feel like it kind of requires that um, that tabletop aspect that um, the the maps and the figures and stuff like that really um, to to be fully immersed I don't know I, I don't think I would love that I guess is the thing and I'm sure I would enjoy it I'd sure to have fun because um, I honestly don't think I've ever played an RPG t- that I didn't k- at least kind of enjoy, you know? It's like yeah. it's like pizza. I mean... Are we going on the pizza thing again? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's always pizza. This is the Thread Raiders, baby. We're always talking pizza. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, But, you know, it's like pizza. Like, I mean, even when it's bad, it's still pretty good. So... Um, and I feel, for me at least, tabletop role playing games. It's like even when they're bad, you know, they're still pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> still, uh, right? Still a role playing game, and uh, so can't go wrong with that. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Nerdy Teddy, how about you? Um, can you tell us your introduction to tabletop role playing games? Yeah, it wasn't uh, too long ago. I think about four or five years ago. Um, just uh, talking to some friends, you know, about how much we like fantasy stuff. Finally, you know, we decided to play. Um, starting in uh, three point five, actually. Okay. Um, also skipped four. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I played for a little bit and then. It was a couple years off. Um, okay, yeah. Kind of, and so during that time, skipped four and kind of sort of picked things up about around uh, just not long after five had come out. And then I um, played D&D about once a year. So now, so like now I just play everything else and sometimes I play D&D about D&D. See, that's funny because... Um... Now, a lot of times I'll hear, hear the stories about how someone will get their start in, like, uh, one of the World of Darkness games or something like that, and then they they find their way to D&D, and then everything else is history. Um, and a lot of folks, you know, usually when they start with D&D, they usually stick with it, at least pretty steadily, you know. Um, I love your story because you really you you know that's kind of it was kind of like your gateway drug was Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> but you kind of just like said okay bye Felicia um, and you like went and looked and grabbed like every other game you could find and you're uh, playing them and you're uh, you're modifying them and and homebrewing and doing all this stuff um, I love that. I love that so much. <laughs> you know, um, so, uh, um, so you, so you also skipped over four. Uh, now, do you, um, because what I know of three five is 
essentially what I've seen of Pathfinder, right? Uh, it's just a lot of information, a lot of books, a lot of rules and source. So there's a lot of customization and everything, like so much customization, like infinite customization. Um, Say customization again. Customization. Um, <laughs> now, did that ever seem overwhelming? Did that ever seem like... Yeah, it could. I, I can definitely see it. I am... When you have so many options, we didn't have every book, so we didn't have all the options. But when you have so many options, and then, I mean, 3.5 had that list of skills, and then a bunch of empty boxes, add more if you want. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but if you want me to make decisions, how am I supposed to make these decisions? They, wait, add more? Like, you're just like... Yeah, I think because some of the, some, like, if there was, they they just some they only had like a certain amount of basic skills okay. in the thing and then it was like here's a spot to be able to put more when you get supplements and stuff and it's like this is way too many choices right that's yeah. it feels like um it just feels like a lot to remember um mm -hmm. and what it really feels like okay so um uh, it's not like just like a lot to remember because this ain't remembering shit, right? <laughs> um, so it feels like I would be sitting there like just constantly flipping pages as I'm trying to find the thing that kind of I remember, but I don't remember like the <laughs> whole thing. And I'm like, I need mm -hmm. to look this up and I can't find it. Um, did they at least uh, provide like a codex index type thing? <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we kind of had it. We we, we kind of also winged it a lot. Okay. It was just like you know, but, but I mean, I had the same problem with Shadowrun Forty. Like we we use Chummer, and I'm like forgetting where everything is and what I got. And it, when you have so much to keep track of, that's why I like Powered by the Apocalypse now. I, I only got. <laughs> This small little thing to keep track of. It's way better. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, I see. All right. Um. Yeah, that's just. I don't know. It's too much. Too much for me. I don't know. Um. But I. I. I also see the the plus sides to it. You know, like, I do love the idea of customization. Um. I think maybe that's sometimes the one of the things that I think, uh, like I personally run into playing 5e is it's great. I love the system. I love the way it's set up. Um, but sometimes it feels like it's lacking some sometimes <coughs> with like, like especially subclasses, I think, um, like for the official subclasses they have out for, I would say at least, um, uh, sorcerers. Mm -hmm. Paladins, and I mean, <coughs> kind of rangers. Uh, I'm not. Well, a, I don't even go down that road. I just not. I'd a, like well, to see a bit more with monk. I'm just not a big fan of like. Well, especially the official ones for for both sorcerer and paladin. I don't like any of them at all. Um, wild magic, kind of, but like. I feel like that needs to be expanded upon too, you know, just, and so it'd be nice to kind of have maybe a little bit more options, you know, so, mm -hmm. but I think there's a little, like, a little more would be nice. A lot more might be too much, you know, like that would be, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. You, I mean, you also end up in the place of paralyzation because you have so many choices. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I I saw that today with bringing in. So I I for those that, that didn't follow any of the things that I that we were posting today, hmm. um, I brought in two new, two brand new eleven year olds to the D and D fold. Uh, they would have they they had a hard time just reading over, fifth edition. 
uh, they just and they're they're like, nope, I'm noping out of this for right now. And they they got through half of it, and they're like, nope, see ya. Right. Attention span just checked out. <laughs> And so if, if they had to go through 3.5 or Pathfinder, they'd have been done. They wouldn't even made it through. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, there's, there's a lot to love about, um, I mean, there's a lot to love about either edition and uh, each has its, its pluses and minuses. One thing five has definitely going for it is that because it's more streamlined compared uh, to three point five, it's a little bit more accessible to to new players, and mm-hmm. um, and that is just one of those things that is fantastic. Um, it's a oh. long one. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So, but I, I mean, I think there's always going to be, there's always going to be those, um, those folks that you are, you start to introduce any game to them and they're kind of going to be like, hmm, okay, yeah, maybe. And I, I don't know. Um, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. Wow. Okay. How's it doing? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> ah, well move on but um but uh thank you for that nerdy teddy for sharing that and um uh yeah wow okay um we're only a half hour in folks uh three more hours to right. go it's okay well, you got this man uh but ari um how about you um could you t- tell us about your introduction to tabletop role playing games? Uh, well, funny story. <laughs> I I got set up on a blind date, <laughs> and you know where we went. And I was not one. Like my friends all played D anD D, and I I was into fantasy stuff, but I never played tabletop games. Like I was one of those people that would sit in my bedroom and play <laughs> Tales of the Abyss for hours on end, and not leave my room. I don't and know what that so is. What is that? It's a it's a Japanese RPG. It's a it's a Japanese game. Um, a video I'd game? Sit, yeah, I'd play oh, okay. it for hours. Okay. And it's a good one. It's a very good one. And they sent me on a blind date with their friend who we on the blind date we went to a gaming shop and we went into the back room and started playing some card game. And I just remember being kind of like, I wasn't warned that we were going to go do something that wasn't, like, normal date stuff. Oh. So <laughs> I was kind of upset. But, like, it was fine. It was fun. But I didn't really start playing until, like, three years ago, though. So I skipped 4E2. <laughs> okay. I skipped 4 and started straight into 5 when I started watching D&D streams. Uh, I started watching, what is it, The Unexpectables over on their channel. But, um... And that's where I started my first game. I never started as a player, though. I started as a DM, and Whoa. I made the mistake of wanting to run a game based on the Divine Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> that's fabulous. I was, it was not my brightest moment. <laughs> but yeah. it was fine. I learned. I learned lessons, and it's fine. I can kind of DM now. Uh, you're great. Uh, you are back, yeah. You are back. Um, okay. S- might be frozen still a little bit, extra wise, but yeah. Okay. Just uh, checking because my whole network decided to go completely wacko for a minute. You're a little yeah. bit so, laggy, but. Yeah, I think it's know. catching up. Um, <laughs> we'll, uh, okay. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I really, really like tabletop games now but uh, yeah that first experience was a surprise and i think it threw me off a bit <laughs> <laughs> got on a blind date randomly to a somewhere you've never been before <laughs> um so i guess i have to ask the million dollar question um it did this blind date how did that work out it didn't work out very well like the, the game thing was fine mm. the game thing was fine is he he was just a bit off so 
I just <laughs> I it, I got weird vibes. So um, and that's that's perfectly normal. That happens. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I got weird vibes from that one. I ended up having a friend come pick me up. So oh um, wow, really? Just from that? Oh, that so bad. From that he date, he gave me he gave me weird vibes. Oh. I just was not comfortable. So I. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was that that was very smart of you. Yeah, I called mm -hmm. one of my buddies. Can you come get me? <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Ugh. But I mean he seemed nice enough. But I don't know. I just got a weird feeling from him. I just I don't know. Oh my I still goodness. can't tell you why. But um I guess to answer the question <laughs> about the favorite system other than D and D. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Hold oh, okay. On. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, we we'll get to the let's do the uh, we're gonna do our introduction and stuff here first and then we'll we'll circle back to the questions and uh, so that we can all uh, answer them together and stuff like that so because um, it's always a, a a discussion in itself uh, when we get through each question um, but so you started in five e right yeah I started in five e okay. I've dabbled in other things but. This is fantastic because I already know where Chris got his start. So we've got a, we've got like one, you know, um, <laughs> everything, and <clears throat> this is fun. Okay, this is fun here. I don't know why it's fun, but it is fun. So, um, <laughs> but um, that's awesome. Um, um, Chris, how about you? But um, how about you? Uh, the can you tell us your introduction to tabletop role playing? <laughs> so I got pulled into a second edition game back when I was in college, uh, just after doing some live action stuff with the SEA down in, like I said, in college. So we just finished some SEA work, and then my a friend of mine was like, "Well, let's go home and play some D and D," and I went, "Uh, sure." And so we played DT after the SCA event, and uh, the rest is history. Because now I'm playing D and D and all sorts of other fun things, and teaching little kids D and D, and yeah, sleeping it's been <laughs> nice distraction. But yeah, it's been all round, round bit ever since. Um, so that was second edition. Yep. And that is, um, wow. Okay. So, uh, so here we go. We have, we have, we have one of each here, folks. I am, uh, starting first. Chris starts second. Nerdy started in third. Um, Rick started in fourth. R started in fifth. That we is. We get the whole gambit. Yeah. The whole, <laughs> the whole gambit. Yahtzee. Uh, no way. <laughs> No, it's a straight. We right. win. It's there a royal flush. <laughs> um, and um, or again, keeping a bunch of gamers organized. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. Listen, my dog wagged her tail. I had to show the camera. Oh, there's, you know, it's... she looked at me. <laughs> Maddie, do you see what Enigma Soul just wrote? <laughs> no, that's, that's what I'm. That's what I was uh, responding to. I was like, oh, okay. You know, um keeping gamers organized and stuff on task i you know no i'm definitely not um keeping over... a bunch of dms organized and on task <laughs> really not trying to do that because that would be insane um but that's n insanity in a bucket right there that'd be um... a fun that'd be a fun like one shot is everybody dms a turn <laughs> uh, i think last It'd be madness before but... extra life um Daquin Games and Chaotic Anarchy did dueling DMs. Right. I unfortunately wasn't able to watch it, but from what I heard, it was fantastic and extraordinarily difficult. I wow, I don't know. Um I think uh don't that could be fun, you know, something like that. I don't know. Huh. I don't you could just know. do it like that Twitter poll one that you did. <laughs> <laughs> They have to DM what their set of Twitter polls says. See now, Ooh. that that was fun. It was hilarious. The first time I did it. Um, 
The second time went a little off the rails and <laughs> was that my fault? No, no, no. This, <laughs> that because I, I think that was more poon to be honest. <laughs> you know, like um, yeah. was she in on it? No, this was the second. Um, oh, because because we did we did the so random for your uh, for your uh, birthday. My birthday. Yeah. Um, I did another one for the um. Uh, the big gay one shots during Pride Month. Oh. And um, I don't know. I think I was trying to catch lightning in a bottle twice or something, and <laughs> I got burned. Um, I still I, need to draw my pixie riding the kitten with her. Right, right. <laughs> um, and that, but see, you guys, you guys, you guys fought the uh, dire chromatic platypus, you know. Yes, we Plot did. Plot being a really strong <laughs> term, I'm... I think we banished it to another dimension. Yeah, it really got banished. Uh, we were smart, boy. Ish. That was um, <laughs> that was a real letdown at the end there. I was like, oh man. I don't know. I was happy with my thirty kittens that I unleashed. It was the first D and D monster I'd ever statted in D and D Beyond. Um, Come here, Sophie. And uh, I really didn't get to use it. <laughs> It Don't was you awesome. Hate that? Huh? That you spend all this time working on an NPC uh, or a monster, and then they're just like plane shift. Well, yeah. I say this because <laughs> I did it to my DM's monster like three weeks ago. That, that that is that is a DM GM issue around the board, you know, like. Um, Sophie, come here. You're gonna work on something, and the the players are either gonna they're gonna walk right by it, they're gonna dismiss it somehow it's going to become a non-factor all this work that you put in um they're going to focus <laughs> in they're going to focus in on the blade of grass they're going to focus in on the the random shopkeeper that you put no thought into that you just randomly named and picked the most random a uh, accent out of your out of your backside in the last minute keep. so and his name is skelly man von skellington and he's a skeleton <laughs> that just poofs he plane ships at will. Uh, <laughs> and we're at going to Taco players. Bell to feed Mog! Um, <laughs> right, today. Like, we didn't even make it to the Weeby Toys. Like, it was just... Uh, it turned into a Taco Bell thing, and it was... Oops. It was fantastic. It turned out great. Uh, they actually found information and found out something new about Miss uh, Big Boss Man. It's, it's great. I love it. Um, but did we? Did we really? No, we didn't find out anything really. Uh, you did. You did. You saw him uh, do something uh, magical, and that is something. That is something. All right. That is true. Okay. He's more than just a scary man who yells. That doesn't actually yell. That's just a speaking voice. But I almost killed my voice doing that earlier today. <laughs> what we were talking about before we started with the blade of grass that I have now have to voice every Friday on Welcome right. to That's the right. Party. Steve. <laughs> Hi, you guys. You know, I've only been here like 11 days and I keep getting stabbed to harm, but, you know, I want to be a hero. Oh, yeah, no, you shouldn't have done that. That's for sure. <laughs> no, that's stupid. Yeah, you, 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 you signed your own vocal death warrant right there. <laughs> right. Um,. Uh, so we um, we have our uh, our first question, um, and I think we've got those. Okay, awesome. Um, so uh, the first question, and I want to say, oh boy, that was from Jaron D and D, right? Jaron D and D. Was it? Does anybody remember that? Okay. Sorry, he's muted. Yes. Awesome. Um, so, what is everyone's favorite non D and D TTRPG system? And um, I would definitely like to have uh, Nerdy Teddy start on this because this is like their expertise here. So, um, all right. Yeah, I mean, if we're just talking system, it's got to be Power by the Apocalypse. I love its its overall flexibility. I mean. There's lots of games made out of it. I mean, there's, uh, you know, and then there's even there's Blades of the Dark, which now has its own hack version, but it was a version of Powered by the Apocalypse. And 
I, I love oh. the range of games in it. So there, you know, there's masks. Um, there's Apocalypse World, the original game. There's Dungeon World. Uh, and I love that it's light, it's contained, but like we were talking about, it still has the ability you can create kind of anything you want. Like, so like in Masks, even though it tells you, okay, here's the powers you have, but it's up to you to find ways and to find what that means. So if you have light manipulation, it's up to you to find what light m manipulation means rather than being defined by, oh, you can throw fireballs and stuff. And it, it has a lot of flexibility. And I just, I really, I really love Power by the Black Bear. <laughs> um, so that's fun. Okay, great. Thank you. Because I have seen that, um, that abbreviation before typed out so many times. No freaking clue what it was. Um, What's it called again? I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was Pokemon related. I was like, I'm like, what is that? I don't know what it is, and I I don't even think I even got around to googling it, you know, um, because I'd be I don't know doing something else or whatever. But Smage just popped that up. I was like, two and two together. Oh, well, that just that's okay. Ah, I learned Pokemon something a today. Top, so I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I'm feeling don't know. good now because uh, now I can start to understand more of what my friends are talking about. Um, so. <laughs> it's um, okay. I was today years old when I figured out what that meant. I've well, never seen the acronym, so yeah, me too. Uh, I know. That I makes. Mean, that makes four. I've, I mean, I've seen it so many times, and whether it's on Twitter or, uh, like, in a Twitch chat, you know, just, like, randomly people are talking about something, and I'm like, what is that? I don't, I don't know. And I don't want to be that, you know, because sometimes I'm a little self-conscious about the fact that I'm generally older than the other people I'm playing in a game with um, by quite a few years. And I'm like, I don't want to be that guy going, what's that? I don't understand that. You know, like, <laughs> um, what is that newfangled thing with the, what's that acronyms? Listen, you know? Maddie, I'm the same way and I'm, all, I'm almost 27. So it's fine. I don't know what half the internet words mean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have no idea what half the internet words mean. I'm like, what's a bay? <laughs> Um, and I also, um, generally just chalk whatever I, if I see an anagram like that, though, generally, if I don't understand it, I usually chalk it up to video games, you know, cause I don't know video games like at all. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, it must be a video game thing. So <laughs> I don't have to know it. I don't know, I don't know. Um, uh, no, Capers Noir is not. Uh, the Kickstarter right now, uh, it's Capers Covert that is on Kickstarter right now, and mm -hmm. um, uh, which has, uh, gosh, I mean, yeah, uh, he got that thing funded real quick. Uh, Craig's not just a a, a whiz. There's a roof for him, man. That's Maybe. awesome stuff too. I mean, he's created some phenomenal stuff, you know, um, but he has definitely. Um, he knows how to put a good Kickstarter together, so um, good guy. And yeah, Capers is so good. Um, so that's that's good. I've learned something. Thank you, Nerdy Teddy. I appreciate that <laughs> so much, so much. Oh my god. Um, uh, who would like to jump in on this next? Can Can I go real quick? Because my dog needs to go outside, so I need to take her out. Yeah. Um, if that's okay. No. It's not well, he's okay. like sitting here staring at me, being all pathetic and whining, and it's. So what's your uh, what's your favorite non RPG or non D um, RPG? I haven't played many of them. I've played one shots of various different ones. Like so, I'm torn between Legend of the Five Rings and okay. Chronicles of Darkness Second Edition. So. I haven't played either one. Or regular Chron. I don't know if it's Second Edition. I think it's Second Edition. I don't know. It's the new one. Chronicles of Darkness. It's easy though. You can do so much stuff in there. You can do so much stuff, and I just like the way Five Rings just operates. It's right. It's nice. 
heard a lot of good things. Heard a lot of I good things. I played it. I DM'd a one shot from the starter set because I don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> That's a good way to uh to learn something though, is to I ended up buying the full PDF of the rule book and printing it out because the starter set comes with like a condensed rule book and it sure. doesn't explain everything that you need no. for the one shot. <laughs> like there's there's rules in the one shot that you need to know, but it doesn't have it in the starter kit little condensed rule book. That seems like a mistake. <laughs> like, I'm just sitting here. Like, hold on. How are you supposed to? How are you supposed to run that though? If that's the case. Yeah, like... that, that, that's oh, no, no. a mistake. I, even, I bought two sets of the dice for five rings. I have nobody to play it with. Um, Aww. but it came with this neat little. It's really pretty. It came with this <coughs> neat little like starter rule books, right? Right. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Nothing. Scholastic I... comic thin. Yeah, no, I mean, I've got like I've got some starter this sets up here for different rule systems. Book. Yeah. And they're like they're they're just little little things but kind of give the you a little taste. one shot the little one shot's right here but it has some stuff in it and it's great because it's got all these little like little like scripts and stuff and yeah. stuff you can do and um like i really really like the way this system is set up but it, there's some rules that are just really vague right and hard to figure out oh uh, even in the main rule book it's hard to figure out so sure yeah i get <laughs> yeah but I, so it's I like kind of it. like the fifth edition starter kit where it kind of crappy <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know i didn't buy the fifth edition starter kit because i just was like you know what i just want i'm just gonna buy the books and <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and i won the the set of all the books on dnd beyond from uh, the that's very lucky um... i know i got so lucky I, I'm uh, still like very grateful that I got that. <laughs> I bought mine, but you know, I Me was too. about to buy it literally the like that afternoon. I was had it keyed into my thing, and I was about to buy it, and then yeah. But, but no, you've I... got uh, uh, Black Friday's coming up. If you need uh, like D and D Beyond stuff, like wait for Black Friday because usually. Uh, it's like fifty percent um, off and stuff like that. That's thing, what I did, so. Another thing I like about Five Rings is there's this little, um, and I don't think I've got it printed out. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. There's this little twenty, like a game. It's called a game of twenty questions, and that's how you build your characters. You go through and you answer all these questions by flipping through the book. Mm -hmm. and that's cool. By the time cool. you're done answering all the questions, you have your character built. Oh, you that's have their that's story cool. fleshed out. You have all their stuff fleshed out. That's an interesting way of doing your your character build right and it's nice i like i was really pleased with that and i'm trying to come up with a way maybe to do that for 5e but 5e is so much more convoluted that hmm. i would probably hate my life by the time i'm done doing it <laughs> um but hmm. i know i'm almost done <laughs> look at this i mean like take her Oh man! Yeah, she's gotta go potty. Uh, she's gotta go potty. Take the take the doggo out. Ew. We'll wait. We're good. <laughs> have to wait on me. I'll just go take her out and <laughs> deal uh, with it. Well, I mean, we're not gonna wait. It's like <laughs> that wouldn't be very fair for the folks watching. Like no, we're don't just. Listen. Sitting here like, oh, da, 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 da. dog's taking a long time. You know. Yeah. Um, so, oh boy, that is a lot of anagrams. Okay. Um, I'll bear that. Uh, acronyms, ah! acronyms, acronyms. Wow. I know acronyms. words. I know words this morning. Anagrams. Tonight. I think my brain just broke. I my brain broke too, but that was sorry. Uh, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty um. My brain broke years ago, so. Um. Uh, yeah. So, Rick, Chris, um, do you guys have I a favorite? Next. Is that all right, yeah. Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Um, I really liked Call of Cthulhu. Okay. I wasn't expecting to. I was a little nervous, but it was really, really fun. I played in one of TK's games. Um. I think it was for another charity too. We, yeah, we do a lot of charities here at Fred Raiders. Yeah, 
yeah, it was very, very fun. And I got to play a very, very fun character who was based off of a real person who lived in a nursing home I worked at. <laughs> and uh, making her was very simple. And I got through it. You know, I, I read up on it and I studied it for a little bit. I'm like, okay, I can do this. And I did. And I wasn't incredibly lost. So I was just minorly lost, which was okay for me. Yeah. So I didn't have to ask too many questions, <laughs> which made me feel kind of good. Um, I hate it when I have to be like, okay, what do I roll now? Why do I add to it? Right. Like every single turn. Right. So, but because it was TK, we all died in the end. Um, <laughs> well, of course, because that's, that's TK's brand and that's how he rolls. Um, but, uh, um, but you probably think, or you probably, um, I don't know if you feel the same way, but learning a new game, it's always kind of better to just jump in and play it um than it is just to sit down and read the rules i i at least for me i yeah. and i love to sit and read rules you know i'd agree on most games except for promethean don't just pick up promethean and go yeah i'll run this <laughs> i i didn't i don't look at me <laughs> speaking for a friend <laughs> yeah. uh, i'll take that under, under advisement <laughs> Who's a friend? This poor friend. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, what about uh, what about you, Chris? So, uh, outside of D and D, I'd have to say my favorite game to play is probably Vampire. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, what editions are we talking here? Because uh, there's a lot. So of, yeah. I know there's lots. There's lots of editions. So um, well, there's as many as you know. <laughs> D &D, yeah, but, you know, I know. Yeah. So the ones I played was uh uh oh, which one is it? I'd have to go get the book to make, make sure I, would, I have the right edition. Um it's the one I played was it's the second edition version of it. And okay. it, um we still have the books and we still we haven't cracked them lately, mm -hmm. but uh we do have the fifth edition, the one that's just released from White Wolf. Yeah. Um because Julie wants to run it. But uh, it's it's been it was one of my favorites, and I think uh, eventually we'll probably end up running it again. Okay. But it was one of my favorites because it, it was so it was a it was quick and simple to bro to build and run, and I don't know, I've always been a big fan of the D10 system. So I like the D10 system. I like um, I I like personally the vampire uh, the the games <laughs> itself. Um, because they're very um they're very less combat driven yeah exactly it's more narrative uh yep. more narrative based more storytelling and i'm so I'm a big fan of that um and obviously anybody who knows me um and uh this channel knows that you know cause i ran vampire one shots right here on this channel um and I love, I love vampire. Um, I love the lore. I well, so okay. I can say it's not exactly the lore um, that I love. I love the um, the way the clans are set up mm -hmm. and how. Um, how po like political it can be like with the clans and how they deal with each other within a city <clears throat> that is my crack right there that is what I love about Vampire the Masquerade it's like I will play the political entry game until I'm blue in the face because I just I love it I love it um, but uh, uh, but like you know the the actual lore where they talk about the who's and the what's and the the history and stuff like that i never followed any of that shit um so most people didn't you know like when they talk about like 
what they wrote in 5e yada yada and, and, and people having issues i'm like I, don't know, I didn't pay attention to that stuff anyway so um the only the only real thing that i remembered lore wise is how the vampires essentially were created you know mm -hmm. or uh you know that they all came from Cain, you know that mm -hmm. kind of thing um other than that the who's in the what thing keep in the masquerade i do what i want you know <laughs> uh and what i wanted was for share to be an a uh, very uh an elder you know the uh the sire of the prince of the city of seattle was share yes it was it was fantastic and it just happened that way and i i'm i'm not i'm the not toreador uh, <laughs> yes 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 of course uh because i'm a big toreador fan i love toreador um they're so they're so dramatic i love them and uh <laughs> the the whole thing about their flaw being um you know how they're just so obsessed with beauty and they can get really mm -hmm. enthralled by that um especially when i was like uh, like a, a teenager in high school god i can relate to that so hard like man um i would see oof and like i'd like lose my shit i'd be i wouldn't think about anything else and yeah mm -hmm. enthralled yep i it's a great system yeah i love so, it i love the tornado i love the system that's that's a good one i and that's probably the only uh, the only game that was that was mentioned that I've actually played. So there's that. Um, I've I've always wanted to play Call of Cthulhu. I've never had the opportunity um, to do so. Definitely down for that. I've got. I know I have Blades in the Dark. And I have a copy as well. Never been able to play it yet. Have it. I have Numenera. it saved in my Amazon cart right now. I have. I have a lot of systems, and I have. Like I said, I've picked up some starter sets and stuff like that for uh things that you know you just see at the game store and you're like oh i've heard people talking about this and so um that's 20 bucks i'll check it out i'll pick it up mm -hmm. and it sits on the shelf it's pretty you know like <laughs> i don't have time um i just hoard books so i don't even care if i play it or not true i, just... true. I have as many as zero books I'm a dragon. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Are you my, all digital then? No, my brother has all the books and I just borrow them from him. Ah, okay. Collect is a mild word for what I do with books. <laughs> <clears throat> I will say though, back on the Vampire Edition for a second, that fifth edition book set that you can buy, that screen is amazing. Oh, really? Oh, it's such a pretty screen. Hmm. Super heavy duty screen. I wish the fifth edition D&D &D books... For if, if, Requiem? Yeah, the screen for that is amazing. There's a screen and I didn't get it. Uh, yeah. Apparently. Where? Gosh. I mean, go get it and show you yeah. what it looks like? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Give me two seconds. I'll go get it. Like, I bought the screen because I didn't have a screen for my in-person D&D game. So I bought the um, screen for Five Rings. Uh-huh. And it's beautiful. Like, I am in love with the screen. I don't even play the game, but I am in love with it. Like, I do the same thing, Magnum. Oh, I nice. still buy all the print books, but I use digital. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like three gigabytes of PDFs on my in a folder, so. Yeah. <laughs> and it's got all the, it's got a, it's got a lot more easily explained rules than the starter kit or the book. Oh wow. Like, the screen oh explained my. more to me than the book did. That's, uh, oh, wow. Okay. Like, it explains... Like Look how thick that... it is. Wow. That is... Oh, my. Jeez. That is a... It's super thick and heavy. I have a need. <laughs> I have a need. <laughs> it, is, it is beautiful. It is so well done. I need, like, I don't know if you saw it, uh, Chris. The five ring screen is just... Absolutely oh. just gorgeous. Oh, it is. That is beautiful. I'd want that on my wall. I just use it as my D&D &D screen because I, I don't like the 5 d screen. Yeah, I'm with you. I have never used a screen. I just I use it for my in-person games because 
I just use it, but. <laughs> um, so I use screens. Let's go down that road for a second. So I use screens as my initiative tracker now. Oh, okay. So um, I I don't know if I, I can. I, don't know, I can't probably find that picture really fast, Maddie. But in my last at my our gathering event that we just did, where I do a bunch of a bunch of games all that one in one location, I had a ring of people around me, which was yeah. nine people plus three layer actions and enemies with initiative tents around the the screen to keep track of initiative. And so instead of having on a paper, the tents moved as the initiative changed for all those people. Goodness. It made initiative tracking instant. So when people were, if people's initiative changed because of a spell change or something like that, it made things for tracking that many people and that many the lair actions and all of the people it made tracking all of that stuff so simple is that that's what like you mean putting it on top of the screen and moving them around yeah mm -hmm. that, i saw that on castle mac and i'm like i am doing that from now on instead of writing it down on a piece of paper that i have to keep scratching out <laughs> yeah. um i have a beautiful pdf i can forward you the link to that would be fantastic it's, it's amazing. It's what I use. It has a minor selection of items that you can put on it, like AC, passive perceptions, and stuff like that. I can actually give you the link of the guy who did the PDF. He, he has a bunch of stuff that he, he just gives away for free for in-person games like that. I'm sorry, no Shirachi. I don't mean to smack you. Um, <laughs> well, that's, that's also what I really like about the Ravenrook books, because they have those um, these things. Which game is this? So I don't spoil it. Okay, this is fine. Um, they've got these pages with all the, like the character charts, stats, and everything, but they're like a clear page over top of the paper. So oh. you can I use a wet erase mm -hmm. marker on this. Yeah, and I actually got... need to update it because they leveled up recently. But and then it's got this lovely thing on this side, which I really like. The uh, quick NPC stats. So like if they start combat with an NPC that they shouldn't have really started combat with. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. <laughs> You, you can just like it has like level 19 or whatever level 20 and it goes across the board and you can pick like the oh wow the stats and everything on that so there is the link to the pdf and there is the link to his site awesome. in the chat so um, if you do in in group chat in group games those are amazing i really shouldn't have put this in this Rocky picture it's gotta be uh, now um if the chat wants them, I'll send them out to the chat as well. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, right. Ooh, the um, the question. Um, <coughs> I am trying to think. I honestly, I don't think I have like uh, personally an answer other than probably Vampire the Masquerade as my favorite non D and D <coughs> game, but. Um, that's mainly because the other games that I have played, um, were mostly back when I was a teenager. Um, I'm really trying to think how many games other than D&D &D that I've played since I got back into tabletop gaming a few years back. And other than Vampire, I'm... I, I can't off the top of my head and I'm probably just forgetting I know I'm forgetting something but I don't think I've really gotten to play a lot of other games I'll tell you the game I'm dying to play though is Star Trek Adventures I have the book I have the starter set I have like sets of dice I <laughs> am a Star Trek next generation like goober fan uber fan like I yeah 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 you, you know. <laughs> Rick is losing it I know Rick you know it you know it um, I'm a huge Trekkie I know I know your 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 Twitter so handle death by mage your Twitter <laughs> handle is Klingon so like it is. <laughs> so, um yeah uh but yeah I I really do. I <laughs> do try other games. I, 
I have so many too. I've because you know you do the kickstarters and then you have somebody tell you like about something so you pick that up and gosh so many games in my on my computer that i haven't read haven't played but yeah the the first one that i've like really was just like i was i had to i had to get physical you know like physical stuff the books the dice everything with star trek adventures because i really oh man i really want to play that Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, so DS Nine or oh, she said over the over Enterprise over four. Oh, I I wouldn't put Voyager last. Um, I don't think it was that bad. Uh, I don't think it was that great either. But um, and I think putting DS Nine over uh, the Next Generation is valid depending on depending on your age generally um sometimes because <laughs> we all had an introduction you know and sometimes our first is our favorite um fair but, enough but but um, <laughs> what, what game is this oh no this no star trek this in is general. just this is just star trek uh because that oh. derailed you know um <laughs> uh because yeah i got oh god i love talk but TNG is. I'm sorry. It is the. Uh, I think. Yeah. Best television series ever. <laughs> ever. Okay. It's amazing. Star Trek: The Next Generation. If, if you remove the first season entirely, okay, that first season was hot garbage. The the. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say. It before beard the pilot yeah. before beard generally i mean yeah second season wasn't that great either but and but that was mainly because they tried that that weird doctor person and that was weird but um <laughs> i i refuse to remember her name <laughs> uh i know i know but i just don't want to say it out loud because i um, could not stand her yeah says anyway um but Bring yeah, back beverly basically Bring yeah back. seasons three through seven were just like i'm sorry be best television ever ds9 did some great things but you know when it got really great when tng ended and their writers went over that's yeah. when it got really great so okay all right i think i derailed this enough <laughs> yeah. i really really loved the ferengi revolution and everything that was yeah. amazing it was great stuff. It was unique to, like, the Star Trek thing because, you know. Yeah, they, they had, it made they, me really happy. They were able to do so many different things with that show, you know. So DS9 had a very special, you know, uh, thing. And, and they really went off the deep end right at the beginning, you know, like, right at the beginning. It was great. But, um, yeah, that paid off. But still. <coughs> Sorry. I wish I, I wish I could be as much of a Trekkie as everyone else is, but I watched... The, I watched The Next Generation and loved it. Grew up with it. Would die if anyone said it should, you know, go anywhere else other than in, in the, the the halls of the best show ever. Or one of the best shows ever, because it will definitely be in my best shows ever category. Mm -hmm. But I can't say that that's that's where it sits and I can't give it any more love than that. Mm -hmm. Um I'm I'm just not a trick. <laughs> but I will definitely give <laughs> In the best shows ever category. It's really good. It's really good. And yeah, like Jean Luc Picard, come on. So good. So my keychain <laughs> is actually a mini communicator from the original series. There you go. It's um, fantastic. I was also um, <coughs> I was also ten when that show came out, right? So um and so there's this new show and it's great and everything and one of the stars of the series is a know-it-all kid okay <laughs> mm -hmm. shut up wesley i was <laughs> fucking wesley crusher i'm sorry i see there's the f-bomb i'm sorry i'm sorry hey oh. if that's the only if that's the hey it's the first one so far though i know pretty good for for maddie we do, um, we're doing good yeah. um but uh 
I mean, I was that I was that know-it-all kid, you know, like that everyone would tell us shut up, and um, uh, was annoying, you know, like so. I had an affinity and love for Wesley Crusher. I still do, and I still love Will Wheaton to this day. And it all started right there. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I think he is probably the reason I was able to find the tabletop gaming community on Twitter in the first place. Wow. So, okay. <laughs> Star Trek The Next Generation, folks. So we have Star Trek to thank for Maddie. Um, it's fabulous. Talk about a sure. long loop. <laughs> right, right. Um, it all comes back to Star Trek, man. So, uh, okay. Oh, is that a uh, question? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we uh, we have more questions, of course, as I get back into that from the Star Trek derailment. Um, I love Star Trek. <laughs> uh, so our next question, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that was the long one. Um, so on the topic of 5e, does anyone else feel like the bard gets cheated in the subclass department? Not that the subclasses suck or anything, but rather a lot of the other classes have subclasses that hugely impact their entire build and play style, but Bard seems to treat them as a light glaze of icing instead of delicious cake. The class is so defined by the base features that the subclasses feel barely impactful. Am I the only one to feel that? And let me just say before I hand this off to my panel here um, that I do I don't think I completely agree with that, to be honest. Um, I think Paladin gets a bit more. I think a lot of, there are a lot of classes that feel like they don't really get much from their subclasses and, and stuff like that. Paladin and Monk for me. But, um, but uh, and, and I personally do like the differences in the Bard subclasses quite a bit. Um, it just because it's like oh what kind of bar do i want to be what kind of flavor um i think it's i think they're actually pretty well rounded personally and this is just me i'm a person that plays pretty much primarily uh full casters you know so wizard cleric bard those three are my favorite classes to play in 5e and those are the the three cats over on that wall back there you can't see <laughs> that you can't see on tv screen right now but um you know the the person that did the art of the cats as like each cat in the class and stuff like that my husband bought me those three the bard the wizard and the cleric and they're hanging out that back is there. so awesome so because i kind of feel like honestly the sorcerer has like sorcerer is lackluster for those me. those subclasses they don't add anything anything except for like mm -hmm. little minor things you know like that i i want to play sorcerer so bad but i always go yeah never mind never mind i'll, I'll play sorcerer else. when i can make steven strange <laughs> <laughs> there you go um so to uh to the panel how do you feel about this the uh the bard subclasses here uh are these uh t maybe no, there's just not enough there or how do you feel about these um i was gonna say that i agree but then you brought up um i had totally forgotten about like the types of bards you can be so i'm kind of on the fence about it mm -hmm. um when i was playing a bard i'm just like yeah i feel like i have options but i also feel kind of trapped and I can't really explain why. I don't know. So I'm I'm like both. Um yeah, it's it's just one of those things like uh cuz I honestly think bard cuz you've got the lore, right? You've got a lore bard and they're um you it's really defined by the knowledge and so you've got those uh those proficiencies you've got the stuff like that you've got the magical secrets that come in in level six which is like i think the best thing about a bard 
is that you can have a bard with all their cool spells and then at six level lore bard can get the best spell in the book guiding bolt yes <laughs> and um depending on the type of bard you want to play counter spell uh personally is my second go-to there so anyway you know you can do your thing um, but then you have the Valor, you have the College of the Swords, you have the Glamour, you have the Whispers. I think there's really a really good broad range there, <coughs> personally. Um, I, yeah, I just, uh, and I think that, honestly, <laughs> almost every other subclass gets more um, oomph from their subclass options than I'd say, like, Sorcerer does. Sorcerers get nothing. They get Janky. <laughs> Janky. Uh, what did I miss? Oh, I never mind. Oh. I think. No, there was a question I think that Ori missed. I didn't. I oh. don't know. I did. I oh, miss? there it is. I got it. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry, I was busy. Like, taking. No, it's fine. I be uh, <laughs> See, and I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that. Personally, I think the monk has one of the more full palettes of choice. I think they have a uh, really full palette of choice, to be honest. Especially yeah. with how how strong the the bard class is in general. Uh, it, in my opinion, I think the bard is one of the more uh, robust characters to be able to play in five e. Uh, they are <laughs> pound or point for point next to the <clears throat> druid, in my opinion, is one of the more broken classes in five e. Uh, they have you know, the in Druid, in my opinion, if any class needs to be nerfed, I would say Druid is the first one that should be nerfed because they have a excessive amount of abilities that can or cannot be at high levels game breaking next to the Bard with some of the abilities that they get expertise and uh, that unlimited wild shape with that extra HP. Yeah, the, yeah, the Bard, yeah, that's with the Druid. But yeah, the, the bard is in in the same point where they they you know they're you know, what is it where they're half where, where they're, they they get expertise with everything with a couple of things and then they, everything else gets half their proficiencies. Um, no other class gets that or gets comes anywhere close to that. So that's just the uh, jack of all trades. That's what that is. Oh, um, jack of all trades is uh, is yeah. Yeah, that's at second. That's ridiculous. Um, that's hugely important when it comes to a bard. There's other things that come into play too. That yeah, you may not have. Well, but he's own... he's talking about the the subclass options and right. You know, so. but the point though with a bard though is you're only as limited to a bard as far as your mind is limited. Sure. Because a bard is how creative can you be? Right. <laughs> So if you're limiting the bard to just the classes because you want to be limited, then yeah, of course the bard's been limited. But it's a hugely creative class. So, so yeah. but that's my opinion. I mean, everyone has their own, but yeah. that's my opinion. There, it's a hugely powerful class in, in its own right. Yeah. There are other classes that need a lot more love, and let's not give any more power to the bard, <laughs> unless we want them to, you know, beat out the druid. I. I don't know. I'm, I'm still I. Um, Druid bard multi class. <laughs> uh, because the the choice you make there is going to very much impact um, a lot of things. Uh, because you've you've got the you've got the like the the valor or the swords bards that well you know they're going to have some extra um, uh, options for. You can actually get decent armor for that bard and mm -hmm. uh, some uh, great you know, extra attack, things like that. Um, great melee bards. Great way to do that. Um, whereas your your whispers, you can go so many directions with that. And it's... That's through it. There's just... Yeah, so I, I really... Uh, I don't know. I just. I guess I can't really agree with that. I um. I I would. I would definitely. I still think. I still think that the sorcerer is worse. Honestly, and 
when I saw the aberrant mind in the UA, I freaked the fudge out and felt like that is what a sorcerer should be. One day you'll get to play that character. Oh my God. <laughs> I made I made a lore bard aberrant mind sorcerer multi class character for this game that Ari is running. I want to play it so bad. It's so awesome. Just tell me when you'd like to hop into that game, and I'll I'll just add you in. Awesome. So. Oh, it's gonna happen. It's gonna be beautiful. Just let me know. <laughs> it's I'm only sixteen that... sessions, so just let me know. I mean, the other thing that people have to remember is a bard is not a primary. They're, they're a support class. They're not a frontliner. Um, so. Okay. Well, I mean. You can be. But it I, can be, yeah. but its its primary thing is a support class. That's what their their inspirations for, unless sure. they're the one that unless they take the the. I don't remember which class or which school it is where they can self-inspire. I which one is? I can't uh, remember. I can't remember yeah. off the top of my head, but yeah, where if you can self-inspire yourself, then you're the class that's the frontliner. But otherwise, you're more of a, a midliner or a backliner. A bay is a counselor of the D and D group. Oh, that's Sorry. hilarious. Okay. I tried to multi-class my necromancer as Bard. He's, his, he's technically still a necromancer, but his fa casting focus is a violin that he plays, and he plays spooky, <laughs> scary skeletons. <laughs> or nice. yeah, or Dance one. Macabre. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this chat is great. <laughs> right? right. I've been ignoring the chat while I've been ranting, so there I need to go back and read. Some of them are shit posting. Oop. Uh <laughs> And by by that, it's a uh, it's a what is that? What is that? Can you please explain that term um, <laughs> without saying it again? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, because it's something that I hear you guys talking a lot about, um, but it's not like uh, well, it's it's a thing. Um, my my Discord has dubbed me the queen of said word. Yeah. Um, because I do it a lot. Um, it is. How do you explain this word? Um, memeing, I guess. I don't know. Just making jokes. All the, like lots and lots of jokes, silly jokes, puns, like yeah, memes. Well, Not just... stop. It's a meme thing. Shenanigans. Yeah. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. Okay. All right. That's what I. That's what I figured. And I just wanted to clear that up and stuff like that because sometimes, I don't know. That could seem. Um... <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but. Um... Yeah, no. Uh, no, caster bards are not the only valid bards, for sure. Uh, I am, honestly, I'm a big fan. If I was going to play, like, more of a martial character, it would be uh, it would be a swords bard or a valor bard all day. Hell yeah. Best damn things. Or war clerk. I like war I clerks. honestly like the glamour bards. That's my least favorite. <laughs> I like Lynn again. I'm the one who's obsessed with the face. You're like, the one obsessed with the Faye, though. So, you know, so it's like. So it works. And I'm not. So. <laughs> I except, I mean, I, not that I don't love the Faye, but I. I'm not a big. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the person that believes that the. Um, uh, the most dangerous uh, and almost like evil uh, if you were to quantify um, school of magic is not necromancy but enchantment so you know <coughs> I believe it so uh, I'm just not a big uh, I don't know I always took it as charm well enchantment yeah yeah, you know, at the school of enchantment, like any any charm stuff, any of that, mm -hmm. I think is you know just like that's Flat the out. darkness right there. So, yep. yeah. mess with someone's mind, I'm yeah, that's so evil. That. I'm not so great with that. Um, My necromancer mostly has illusion spells. He's the worst necromancer ever, <laughs> or the best, depending. Um, <laughs> okay, where are we? Let me get that back up. Um. Did anybody else have anything to add there? I uh, I know um, I know Nerdy Teddy. You don't really play a lot of the D and D. No. So, um, yeah. Okay. 
I don't play bards either when I do. So I've never <laughs> played a bard. I've only ever played a bard once. I, I've been meaning to, but I, I just haven't. I, I thought it was odd because I'm a musician in mm -hmm. RL. So I'm like, why haven't I played a bard before? Play piccolo, violin. <laughs> yeah, I, played the, I was a half orc who played the ukulele. Never touched a bard. See. So the only. Uh, okay. I have bard NPCs. All right. Uh... King Oberon of the Fae is a bard. Okay, <laughs> so our next is um, what is your favorite part of being a DM? Um. Second part is same, but as a player. Um, oh, okay. That was uh, already added to that. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, it didn't like, it didn't like it didn't, go yeah, down I know. when I, I typed in the I finish. was just like, I was like, wait, is that part of the question? Just, Cause that no. seems odd. <laughs> like, like I, uh, I, I hit enter on the question and then I funny. typed in that like and then it. it did. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, how do, how do you... Okay, so, uh, but bottom line there, um, so <laughs> it's a two-parter there, and so what is your favorite part of being a DM, GM, storyteller, um, and your favorite part of being a player? Um, uh, since our, uh, our bar chat, um, uh, Nerdy Teddy, you really didn't get a chance to, uh, like pipe into that because you really just had nothing to say there um what about this here uh favorite part of about being a, a gm favorite part about being a player i mean it being being a gm i just i like i really like telling stories but i i struggle to actually sit down and you know write out an actual story and so oh. playing these games i can tell a story i can fill in the details that i'm good at filling in which i usually i bu usually build a lot of my stuff off of npcs i'm re i really like building characters and stuff like that so i build off an npc and then i can tell a story and fill it in with the players and and that's i mean it, it allows me to tell stories and that's a big reason i like gming i uh, being as a player i just like i like seeing things unfold and how the players come together with the story and it, it can be it can feel like magic sometimes yeah you want to jump in there Rick? uh i agree i really really like the storytelling um i'm not actually very good at being a dm because all of my stories end up being like very similar to one shots um and i'm i don't do well with like an overarching plot uh but doing a myriad of npcs is so much fun and watching things just go completely sideways and trying to keep up with it and it's just like okay um what do i do now uh, and still trying to look like you know what you're doing. That's that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, that's being a DM. Do you want me to go into being a player? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's your okay. favorite part about being a player? Um, being able to... Uh, what's What are the words I'm looking for? Develop the character. Okay. Like more... Yeah deeply mm -hmm. and give them like a real personality um <coughs> as opposed to you know just an on the surface gnome who has a funny accent who you know she's got this backstory she's got a drive she's got her spirit companion she's got her this and her that and got layers. Able to, yeah. yeah layers like an onion yeah. or parfait Yes, parfait. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's those are my favorite parts. Awesome. Um, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Tear into it. Go, Enigma. Go. Um. Uh, but uh, I do the same thing to myself constantly, especially on this show. Uh, is rip on 
um, my GM skills. So, but you're one of my favorite DMs, Maddie. <laughs> okay, you're funny. You're cute, and I love that. But <laughs> love you. um, yeah, uh, Maddie, you're good. Um, but uh, it's okay. I, you know, uh, you'd be self-deprecating. I am self-deprecating constantly. But um, as long as you. <laughs> As long as you uh, don't truly believe all of the bad things you say about yourself. Okay? Oh, that one's hard. <laughs> I know. I know. But I will rip on myself all day long. Do I truly believe all the bad stuff I say? No. I don't. I don't. Good on you. So... Um, but it feels good to rip on myself for some reason. I don't know. Um, I don't know. It just does. But, uh, but do I believe that stuff? No, I don't believe that stuff. You know, like I know my worth, you know? Um, so uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. I don't know either. Um, you tell us. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, Ari's coughing. Um, Chris, <laughs> I'm uh, dying. Uh, fair part of being a uh, fair part of being a GM. Fair part of being a player. Well, the, of course, the my being the fiat forever DM of my friends. It's the best part is is I love building stories to watch them. Twin, you know, I'm one of those DMs that I build a story and I like to watch them, not just play in the sandbox because that's where I, that's the type of stories I built. I build stories in sandboxes and watch them twist in the story. And then I like to poke the bear, so to speak, and, wa and then watch them react to the poking. Right. Um, I, I do a lot of things where it's, I know what happens in the real life and I know what will, tw what will make them go knee jerk in this direction. Right. So I, I will poke that bear and watch them go, Hey, wait a minute. No. And then they'll twist off into that direction. And so it's nice to see them react to things in the world because the world reacts to them. Mm -hmm. And so I do that a lot in my games. But the, the, so the overarching story is always progressing, but there's always these little things that happen in game that moves things in different directions. So I, it's, that's how my, I always love to do those things in my games. And then as being a player, I, doesn't happen as much as i'd love um uh but it's always fun to be able to play with a different accent or a different character and watch how a, a dm does it to me because then i could find a new way of doing it to my players later yeah because i always I, I, that's what i always want for a dm i want them to find a different chink for them to oh that makes him react and then i go oh i didn't know that was a button Yes. I didn't realize that about me. Okay, well, if that's my button, what about if I do that to him? Right. I, so, I, I think one of the, the best ways to develop your, your skills as a GM or a DM is to play, you know, mm -hmm. and play for different game masters. Uh, oh, definitely. And just observe what they do because everyone's got a different way of doing things and man you can learn so much from literally anyone you know because and that's yeah and that's what i've been telling my so i've been actually tutoring new soon to be dms um with my it's part of the badlands dnd group that i i've started here because everybody's looking for dms nobody has enough of dms so yeah. that's one of the things that i i'm actually that's part of the thing that i'm working on here mm -hmm. is to bring you know 11 year olds into the into the fold and then teach them how to think in this manner and, and to to see outside of the box and to, to be a dm so and not to just say this is the way to do it because that, that, that's not how a gm or a dm thinks no. here's the sandbox now you build and go play Right. Yeah. Um, and everyone's got, you know, everyone's got their style. Uh, there are going to be, there are going to be the folks that 
have the big open sandbox and that is their style um, you're gonna have ones that are the complete opposite you're gonna have so many iterations throughout the middle of that road mm -hmm. um, and what do you have you're uh, it's uh, you know so just uh, touch back on what I said before um, seeing other GMs how they run games and 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 experiencing them as a player too is really great because um, because not only are you learning things about how to run a game, but you're also learning how um, these things will affect your players mm -hmm. and how they will react to certain things. Um, so it's <clears throat> it's it's all about learning, and that's how we we can become better at anything is by learning. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of learning. <laughs> learning. I said it again. There you go. Oh, can I? Uh, <laughs> I am. Wow. Okay. So we've still got a couple <laughs> hours to go here. I am. Uh, our wow. Huda. Um, and we are getting close to our break point here. Um, but uh, Ari didn't get a chance to answer the question. I, neither did I. So let's um, let's answer. And uh, we'll take our break. Come back. And uh, uh, move on to more questions and stuff. Um, Ari, what about you? Um, hold on. Let me reread the question. Uh... Well, just fair part of being a player, fair part of being a GM. Um, I'm not dying. Um, <laughs> for the DM, I like, I like to make little worlds and stuff up. Like my Fey game is an entire homebrew game of my own Fey realms that I have created. Yes, I use Sylvanas, but that's literally probably the only lore I use that is official TNT lore and even then I twist it um, mm. but I like to make my own little things and kind of like puppet master like I don't I don't like give them in complete and total sandbox control I don't that I tried that it destroys a campaign in my opinion so I just could give complete sandbox just because it goes so far off the rails then when there's no rails there's no structure so <laughs> um but I like I'll, I'll do what Chris does. I'll like I'll nudge them a little bit here and there. I'll push buttons. I'll throw things at them that I know they are going to react to NPCs that I know that they're going to react mm -hmm. to that they have attached themselves to. I don't know. Felix just appears again, and suddenly Felix is the BBEG, and they're gonna be like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> Felix is just a crazy old tur turtle that lives in the woods. Why, why is he the BBEG now? I don't know. You never suspected him. Oh. <laughs> but Butler did it. you never questioned why Felix always was able to appear unharmed in the middle of a dangerous woodpill kelpies. Oh. Um, but, no, he's not the BBEG. <laughs> he's just King Boomy from Avatar, I've decided. But, um, like, that kind of thing. For player, which I don't get to play all that often, <laughs> um, I just like following my character and seeing where they go and right. seeing what they do and like my Azimar druid in the Strahd game she does the worst charisma out of the whole party and somehow managed to schmooze her way through sneaking it breaking into the Baron's house of Velaki and convincing him that his uh, guard captain was insane and letting her arrest him in the middle of the night waking him <laughs> up I broke into his house nice. to wake him up and ask him if I could arrest the guard captain as a mouse. And I managed to roll very high on every roll to convince him not to be mad at me, but be mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those those moments where you surprise yourself because of the dice is great. But right. I, I like to have fun. It's the whole point of random. And shen shenanigans are great. Shenanigans are always fun. Are... My monk, my monk, my poor, poor monk doesn't understand common very well. <laughs> and I like to play off that. And he doesn't know what an orange is called. He calls it the small round orange one that has the nasty tasting outside. <laughs> and the party has yet to convince him that it's actually called an orange. And <laughs> that's okay with me. 
Um, I, uh, I, I'm a big, uh, I have to really, uh, follow a lot of what Narite said is, you know, it's, it's fun. It's really fun to tell a story, uh, as mm -hmm. a DM. Um, though I think my perspective has changed a little bit in the sense that, um, just because of my, I found my personal comfort zone with running games is generally very uh, sandbox. You know, mm -hmm. I I really like to kind of um, kind of put this little thing out there, hand it over to the players. You know, like it's a it's a place, it's something, it's whatever it is, and see where they take it you know um because everyone's got a different playing style everyone's got a different uh way of uh enjoying the games that we play mm -hmm. so i just like to see especially when you're uh like with one shots especially because you're playing with a totally different makeup of people every single time so you don't know what this group is going to be like so it's like all right hand them this thing and see what they do and then go, you know? And like, that's, that's kind of just how I've developed. Um, um, but because that's what, uh, like for the most part, all I really get to do is run one shots, you know? So yeah. that's become my thing is, uh, learning by running one shots and, and whatnot. Um, I was just going to ask you, is that because more, you're running more one shots on this medium than in person long games or? Well, I don't, I, I haven't played an in-person game since high school. Um, <laughs> except for the one, one shot that I ran for my family here one Christmas. That was, mm -hmm. it, you know, get to play one in-person one shots coming up soon. I don't, I just don't do the in-person thing because uh, social anxiety and the people that I would play with just don't live here. So, um, and I don't want to, I, I'm just not great with meeting new people face to face, really terrible at it. Um, but, uh, but it's just a, like just having a time, the time to run a campaign. I just haven't had, you know, um, but as a player, I'll say like, yeah, the character development aspect of being a player is so good, you know, just being able to spend weeks playing the, the same mm -hmm. character and being able to, um, each session you learn something new about this character because something new, uh, comes out in a game when you're, you're role playing and, because uh, you really just never know what this character is going to be until you really start playing it and you start role playing it out and all this stuff and the personality starts to come out the quirks start to you know come out and develop and all that stuff <clears throat> and it's like when you're 10 sessions in 15 sessions in and there's a like just a bona fide person with a history and a and a personality and quirks and traits and oddities that you can't even imagine or think of when you're like in that session zero or when you're making that character writing the backstory or anything like that exactly it's really just like playing that character and you find these little things that come up and it's like oh that that's that's this character that's 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 perfect and it just fits and you're like yes that's what i love i love the development you know and <clears throat> i would say that probably i love i mean i love running games don't get me wrong and i'm really excited about this um uh dragonlance campaign that i've started uh for the podcast I am really excited about it and I love running games, but honestly, 
I definitely love being a player more than anything, you know, um, just personally, because <clears throat> I love, I love like creating a character and just diving right in, you know, like, so if I can spend one session playing just this one person and just getting into their brain and just being that, I usually, I definitely have more fun with that than playing the different characters and all that stuff, which I love acting those things out and develop and making those up. But when I can really so just, you, yeah. So you're a player more than DM. I probably am. Um, I probably am. I thought about it a lot. And I probably am. So. Um, oh my God, Matt! What are you doing? I'd like to be a player more than I am a DM. <laughs> See, I, I'm a DM more than I'm a player. I'll say that hands I think, down. I think I am, but I want to play more than I get to. <laughs> right. No, I, w I would much rather DM than play. Because I always find myself wanting to run games. Like, inevitably, I'm like, oh, I'm going to run a new game. Oh, I'm going to run a new game. Okay, let me Sorry. save Bye, that Jackie. question there. Um, uh, Jackie, love you, buddy. Good night. Um, thank you for hanging out. Uh I'm so glad you're back from Europe. We missed you. We did. And uh, let me, I got that question. I'll uh, put that in there and then save that for when we come back. Uh, so we're going to be right back, folks. We need to take our break here because uh, we still got another little over an hour and a half. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. I had, Something like that. I'm yeah. getting confused by time zones and things because my brain is not. 100% there. Um, but uh, that's, uh, I saw the question there, Magnum, got that saved. Uh, we still got, I think, another couple of Did in I there. miss one? Um, and oh, it just it just popped up. It's all, yeah, we're good. Yeah, um, I'm glad it got it. So we got that. Um, we'll be back in about 10 to 15 minutes here uh, so we can all stretch our legs, go to the bathroom, and refill beverages and stuff like that. And, um, uh, so thank you guys for hanging out and bringing your questions and joining the conversation. And these questions are fantastic. And I love the chat we're having here. It's this, great. <laughs> this, is, this is why I do this because I love it. Just talking, sharing ideas. And, uh, I think we're all, you know, we're all better for it. So, 